Seoul is just such a spectacular place and we all know it because of its scenic beaches and historic tin mines and some argument about cream and jam on scones. But perhaps Cornwall's most significant feature is underground because deep beneath my feet, dissolved in water, there is lithium, perhaps a lot of lithium. And it's starting to look as though we can extract it, we can get it out without a heavy carbon footprint, without destroying the landscape, and in a really, truly local project. It would be such an exciting thing to do. So, will the lithium beneath my feet become the batteries of the future? Welcome to Fully Charged. The geology in underneath Cornwall is, is very unique in the UK. It's a lithium enriched granite that's one of only five in the entire world, a big opportunity for an entirely new industry. If you were to dig down beneath my feet right now, you'd go through all the soil and the surface levels of rock, and then what you would find is an enormous slab of granite, about 200 kilometers long, from the Isles of Scilly all the way to Dartmoor, a few tens of kilometers wide, and several kilometers deep. It is a lot of granite. And the geology associated with it is why Cornwall has always had mines, tin mines, copper mines. It's a feature of digging holes in the ground. They tend to fill it with water. So mines are continually pumping water out. And, and that's why this building is here. It was a pump for pumping water out of mines. But the water they found in the middle 1800s, it wasn't just wet, which is normal for water in a mine. It was hot and it was salty. And so they tested it back in 1864 and they found really high levels of lithium. And then they thought no more about it. So in the, in the years since, holes have been dug all over Cornwall, extracting all kinds of things, there's quarries everywhere, but the lithium was left alone until now. So to start us off, let's go back to what lithium is and why we care about it. So lithium is an element on the left-hand side of the periodic table, and people who remember any of their school chemistry will probably remember that the elements at the extreme left are the ones, the really exciting ones, the ones that, that teachers threw into water that would ignite, that would burn, that sort of thing. So below lithium are sodium and potassium, and then rubidium and the legendary cesium. But lithium is the one up at the top, and it is, the smallest on the one hand, but also it's the lightest. And so one of the reasons why lithium becomes so attractive is first of all, that it is so reactive. And that means that it will lose an electron very, very easily. And so that's an electron that you can take around your circuit, but also the fact that it's not going to add very much to the weight of your battery. Lithium as an element is fascinating, but why are we all so interested in it right now? So lithium is what carries the charge backwards and forwards across the battery. Obviously we have the electrons going around our circuit either when we're charging the battery or when we're using the battery for something. But the lithium ions have got to go the other way to balance the charge of the electrons. And so the lithium is, is what's moving around in between when we're using our battery. So we hear a lot about lithium in the context of batteries. Why is there lithium in a battery? Lithium is obviously part of the name of the lithium ion battery, so it's an absolutely intrinsic component of, uh, of the batteries that we use on a day to day basis. There's a slightly long winded scientific answer to this, and I'll try and keep it brief. But if we look at what's called the standard reduction potential series, bit of a mouthful Proper there. Proper chemistry there. Yeah, we find lithium right at the very, very bottom, so it's got a really very, very negative voltage. And that means that when we partner it with something with a more positive voltage, we end up with a good voltage window for our electrochemical cell. The principal reason that we find lithium in these high energy density batteries is because it gives us a really nice reaction at a really low voltage, and that then gives the operating battery a good large voltage window, and obviously the higher voltage gives us our energy dense batteries that we use for electric vehicles and mobile phones and lots of different applications. naming something a lithium battery, right, you know, really highlights that. You know, who talks about manganese batteries? You know, you know, the alkaline battery is based around manganese. Well, you know, we don't really think of it in that way. So there's an element of branding there. 
But lithium is incredibly important, for example, in pharmaceutical synthesis, in, in, in those kinds of places. You know, there's all sorts of, of niche chemical uses and, and physics uses which are out there but which haven't quite captured the imagination. And as our obsession with electricity has grown and grown, so has our friend lithium. Of all the things that humans do to create modern technology, extracting elements from the earth is still just the most raw thing. We're not subtle about it. We dig great big holes like this. We bash rocks apart with explosives. It's really brutal as a way of getting things done. And you know, that's, that's what this is. This is a scar left by mining operations and Cornwall is covered in this. You know, it gave us uh, copper and tin and all sorts of other things. And, the county is just covered in scars. Even if they're covered over now by greenery, the scars of mining are still there. It's, it's not a great advert for humans, I'll be honest with you. But we are an intelligent species. We are good at problem solving. If we want to, we can do better than this. So this is it, here I am, right at the gateway of this new, exciting underground world. And here it is. It's very small. This hole is nearly a thousand meters deep. It's a, it was drilled with a sort of a diamond rig, which is an apple corer, down at about that sort of diameter. It goes down to nearly a thousand metres. And what's coming out of the hole? Well, it's intersecting geological fractures underground, which are producing lithium enriched geothermal water. So it's really, really exciting. All those fractures are natural. We're not using fracking or anything to try and stimulate them. But there's natural fractures that contain lithium enriched water. The water has been circulating through the cracks in the granite and because it's under high temperature and high pressure, naturally very deep down, it's taken the lithium out of the minerals in the, in the rock, these little tiny uh, flaky minerals called micas that contain lithium. It's got into the water. Lithium loves to be dissolved. It's, it's a very mobile ion. And so that's, where, that's how it's got there in the first place. You're making me think of a coffee machine because that's basically exactly what coffee machines do is they force high pressure, uh, high temperature water through a granular bed, which yeah. is a load of granules and coffee comes out of the granules in that case yeah. and then you've got coffee and, and you're doing that with lithium. It, well, it's, it's a natural process. So yes, that, that, that lithium brine is the coffee that's been produced from the, from the rock deep beneath our feet. We are, so all our geologists are local people who, who all live here. We, we spend a lot of time with the local community telling them about what we're doing and, and telling them how we're doing it. And, and so far we've had no opposition. So far so good then, because that, that must be some kind of world record in mining, yeah, it <laughs> mining is, it is. all by itself. <laughs> it is, but I, I would call this not mining at all. This is mineral extraction. Um, mining conjures up all sorts of bad images. This is really not mining in the traditional sense at all. It's, Sucking water is very much similar to an oil and gas technique, sucking the fluid out from the, from the ground, but it, obviously on oil and gas you burn it and destroy it. We're keeping that fluid, you're taking one vital element out of it and then putting it back. So, and obviously the question then is, are we fracking? We don't need to fracture because the ground is already naturally fractured and it flows naturally. So we, we think this is almost the ultimate uh, environmentally friendly way of doing them and producing a a vital element for the electric future. Tell me about the water. What, what's in, so that's just straight out of the tap in the thing over there, right? Yeah, so this came out of the tap about uh, half an hour, hour ago. Um, and it's actually 
going orange slowly and that's <laughs> merely because there's iron in the water so mm -hmm. all of the rocks uh, the main elements in any rock is calcium sodium magnesium iron and silicon and iron it does not want to be in the water and so it precipitates quite out uh, out quite quickly um, in a natural production facility you wouldn't have that because it's going straight into your processing um, so yeah this has got it's mainly sodium and calcium mm -hmm. um, and chlorine or chloride um, so it would taste salty it would taste we're not salty. recommending people drink it, no it and actually uh, you know compared to seawater this has a seventh of the salt that a seawater has mm -hmm. and in this container there's probably half a teaspoon of salt it's okay, really it's not that bit. salty it's benign groundwater that's yeah. just taken in a lot of other elements from the rocks so what else does it carry? I mean, you said, you said there's, there's lithium in there, obviously. Yes, what, yes. what else is in there? So it's, um, it's largely sodium and calcium. We have iron, as I said, you can see it's dropping out a little bit. We have a little bit of silicon, um, which again, as you see in the rocks here, has actually precipitated out. This is silicon um, and lithium, but also we're interested in elements such as cesium, rubidium, potassium, and you have some boron in there as well. Um, but lithium is our, our main priority at the moment. So tell me about the next pot along, because that's quite an exciting pot. Yeah, so this is lithium carbonate, so Li2CO3. And this is, in fact, the first lithium carbonate ever made from geothermal waters from the UK. Lithium metal is quite hard to make on its own. Um, and the industry historically has always produced lithium carbonate. And in fact, they measure the amount of lithium you sell as LCE, or lithium carbonate equivalent. Um, Lithium carbonate is quite often used for lithium phosphate batteries, um, but lithium hydroxide, so LiOH, or um, it's sold as lithium monohydrate, or lithium hydroxide monohydrate, um, is what will largely be used in EV production in the future. So you can make that into a battery. That's that could yes. be the start of the I processing. could make a battery. Well, I can make a battery <laughs> out of this, but someone could make a battery out of this. My favourite thing about science and technology is that it's so collaborative because you're building on the work of so many people and the great thing about this project is that the collaborators include people who aren't alive today. This is the work of thousands of people over the past 300 years because through all of that time Cornwall has been mapped, people have dug holes, people have found things out and all of that information is still available but you need a bit of swanky technology to bring it all together and really see this 300 year collaboration in progress. So this is, these sections you can see um, on the screen are historic sections through, through um, United Mines um, and they were created from archive data like this one, so this is the one that we show people and on that section it says there's lithium rich waters at the bottom of the mine. So that's a real old map that you now incorporated yeah, into a 3D eight, model, 1800s. which is super cool. Yeah, and then these uh, points on the screen are where um, we've recorded the position of those historic springs that they had recorded in that historic data. Mm -hmm and we've been able to digitise into 3D and then the black lines you can see there are the old mine workings. So this is the granite, this big pink slope coming yeah. down, that's, that's the granite underground? Yeah, that's, that's the granite, so that's where um, we believe that lithium could have been sourced from. So what we were interested in is we're drilling, this is one of our boreholes, we've drilled into um, permeable structures and it showed that the historic data was, was really accurate. And then the black discs are where we've pumped uh, the geothermal waters from. So when the rest of us look at Cornwall, we see it as a flat two-dimensional thing on the map. You, you have in your head this huge three-dimensional structure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's hundreds of structures all across Cornwall, um, you know, tin mines, copper mines, and these geothermal structures as well. Um, these discs that were in the borehole, you could see then, was our planar structures that we've been able to map the orientation of all the joints and faults underground from, from our drilling as well. So that's really important for our working out where the geothermal waters are. And now you've got it all in a computer and you can just zoom around it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's and we see brilliant. in the second hole, which is this one, we see the granite was much shallower than in the first hole. So we hit it about 400 metres and in the first hole we hit it about just over a kilometre. So quite a big difference. 
I love I love this being able to zoom out to a proper three-dimensional model. I think that's so yeah. cool. So United Downs is that small corner. That's where we've drilled. But then this is the other potential that we've modelled across Cornwall. Um, but actually, you know, this what we've modelled is a small part of something bigger that we're still exploring today. This all sounds great. All of these fascinating new ideas sound great, but in the real world, is it actually feasible? Approximately how much lithium is there in the water that is coming from down there? Well, we know that over there, which is the deep geothermal borehole that goes down to five kilometres, the highest grade lithium enriched water, geothermal water in the, in the world. Um, this is slightly less, but still we, we think this, it's material enough to be able to produce lithium from that on a commercial basis. So we're, we're really excited about the potential. It's very important to me that uh, we do this in a low impact, environmentally friendly way. The whole company was started on that basis. We knew that if we could extract it from this brine, it would be zero carbon, um, very, very low impact, and, and really the start of potentially a whole new industry for Cornwall. But it is very, very key to our whole ethos uh, of this company to do that. The thing that makes me so excited about this project is the environmental footprint or the fact that there almost isn't one. There's a lot of ifs still to go in this project. How much lithium is there? Exactly how will it all work? You know, this is the start of a long journey, but the idea that it's even possible to extract a mineral from the earth with such a minimal scar left behind, I'm, I'm really excited by. So I wish Cornish Lithium all the best. And obviously it'd be great for this country to have their own lithium supply, but really doing it without an environmental footprint and be able to track it all the way, that if that's the future, I am all in for it. So that's all we've got for this episode. Uh, if you'd like to support us, you know, there's Patreon, there's the website fullycharged.show, there's always loads of stuff on there. And if you have been, thank you for watching.